It's a pleasure to see you today. It's great to be here. Thank you very much Please, for this opportunity. Please, most welcome. You are Canada's first ambassador to Iraq in 27 years. Why has Canada chosen to return to Iraq now? It's a, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, we've had an office here for, for a long time, but uh, definitely since 2016, we've really ramped up our, our participation. And that's really part of a broader strategy we have in the Middle East um, that includes Lebanon, Jordan, and Syria. We've invested about $2 billion between 2016 and 2019, um, really in an effort to respond to the expansion of, of Daesh. Um, so here in Iraq, uh, we've been playing uh, an important role in terms of the coalition against Daesh, um, both on the military side and the civilian side. So part of the civilian side that many people may not know about is that we're providing training, police training, um, to, uh, to officers, both on community policing and also on uh, the, the role of women in, in policing. Um, we also, uh, on the, uh, something new um, that's been announced is the NATO mission, so that there's a new NATO training mission. There's a Canadian who will be the first um, commander of that mission, so we're also thrilled to be, part, be uh, playing part of, of being, sorry, playing a role, an important role in that. In addition to that, so that's the, that's the, the sort of the, the, the direct fight against Daesh. In addition to that, um, we're very active on the humanitarian side, so providing assistance to people um, you know, in the immediate aftermath of the crisis. The stabilization side, helping to demine, providing immediate services that people need. Mm -hmm. um, helping communities try to knit back together again. Um, we're also very active on uh, development cooperation. And there's a, there's a couple of important themes there that I can tell you about if you're interested. Oh, sure. It seems that you have such a busy schedule, and I'm going to ask about each point one by one. Okay. A stated goal of your office is to advance women's issue. Why uh, have you chosen this issue? That, that's a great question, and that leads into when, I, when, when I, we talk about our development cooperation. Most of what we do really can be summarized around two broad themes. Um, one of them is about governance, um, how to, um, to make government institutions work better, and one of the areas that we're going to talk about and where we've been doing some real work is decentralization and federalism. Mm -hmm. um, but another really important theme has to do with women. And the reason we work on, on issues um, about women, um, th there's sort of key, three key reasons, I think, that, that are important. Um, one is that when you involve women, you end up with a more prosperous economy. Um, and so Iraq right now has quite low levels of participation by women in the economy, and there's enormous potential there to grow the economy, to generate more wealth. So that's one reason, you have more prosperous economies. The second reason why I think it's really valuable is that you end up with stronger communities. So you've just gone, you, you've, go, you've gone through a, uh, a period of tension, a period of conflict, and th to the extent that you involve women in knitting communities back together again, um, those communities are going to be stronger. Um, and the third reason is that you have a more lasting peace. And that's not just something that, that, I'm, that I'm telling you. There's actually been some very interesting research done. So I grew up in a country called El Salvador in Central America. And one of the things that they've done is d done research on the extent to which in, in, in very violent conflicts like El Salvador, women have been involved in the, um, the negotiations mm -hmm. and in the process afterwards. And in each of those instances where you involve women negotiating sort of uh, you know, solutions to the conflict and bringing communities together, the, the, you have a more lasting and stable place. Do you think the atmosphere place. in Iraq and the way that women present themselves is helping you to conduct this program? You're probably better placed to, to answer that question than I am. Uh, what I can talk to is that the kinds of things, the, the areas where we're focusing and where, um, where if you look across so countries. So what are your yeah. focus areas? So the focus areas that we have right now, um, one of them is around the whole issue of women's leadership. Um, so we're doing uh, training at a couple of different levels. One of the things that we've said consistently, whether in the national federal parliament mm -hmm. or at a local level here in the, uh, the Kurdish region of Iraq, is just the importance of involving women in senior leadership roles, whether that's as ministers, deputy ministers, and other sort of senior executive roles. That's a consistent message. 
but not just women at the top, but also women in at the community level. So we have a number of, of, of projects working at providing leadership skills to women. So that's one area. A second level area has to do with economic empowerment, providing women with the tools so that they can be better entrepreneurs, so that they can be more effectively, uh, mm -hmm. effective as part of, of the workforce. And a third area where we're working is women, peace, and security. So providing training to um, women police officers, um, working with women who are in communities trying to sort of rebuild those ties. Perfect. Uh, you mentioned women in senior levels, uh, but there are no, uh, in, in the Iraqi cabinet, so far there is no women as, uh, working as minister. What do you think of that? Well, I, ca I can just say that there's many of us in the international community ha that have been encouraging um, as this process continues of forming the uh, Iraqi cabinet, just, just underlining the importance, mm -hmm. the value that women bring um, to that and to having s women in senior positions. Perfect. You have been uh, in Iraq for about six weeks and in the last uh, six weeks you have, you have had a chance to see some uh, parts of the country and you have visited Kurdistan twice. Can I tell you, can I ask you what was the aim of your frequent visits to Kurdistan? So we have a range of different things that we're doing in uh, the Kurdish region of, of Iraq. So um, uh, part of it is engaging with, with leadership, with um, the, uh, the, the different parties, understanding better the uh, formation of government, where things are going politically. Um, another major important reason we're here is to um, talk about development cooperation and trade. So yesterday I met with, um, with your Minister for Planning and, uh, and Trade, whose name just escaped me. Sorry. Minister? Minister Cindy, pardon me. Dr. Ali um, Cindy. Exactly. So I met with uh, Dr. Cindy um, and to discuss um, the, the, the ways in which we're working together right now on some of these issues and the opportunities for growing the relationship. Good. So what's your perception of the states of women in the country, particularly in Kurdistan? You mentioned before, but I want to know what's your plan yeah. for the women in Kurdistan. So the, the three areas that I mentioned where we're focused uh, gives you a sense of our own priorities, mm -hmm. where we think that we can be most effective and where we may be able to help in areas where there may be need. So the issue of women's leadership, the issue of women's economic empowerment, and the issue of women, peace, and uh, security. I've certainly noted that here in the Kurdish region of, of Iraq, you have, uh, uh, I think it's 30% of the parliament uh, is yeah. women. Um, you also have uh, some real movement in terms of legislation on violence against women. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there's, these are issues that obviously have engaged um, Kur Kurdish society. You also have the, uh, the High Council. Okay, uh, but for in, on the other hand, <coughs> there are many women who have been freed in ISIS, uh, in the hands of ISIS, particularly women from Shingat. Do you have any program for them? We do. I mean, we have a number of different programs. So we're working um, at the level what we call stabilization. Mm -hmm. So th th I guess there's two levels. There's, there's the humanitarian side, right? Responding immediately when you've got um, w with those communities immediately after um, the, the communities have... Uh, in some cases, it's people fleeing those communities. In some cases, it's communities that are that are uh, trying to rebuild. So you have the humanitarian side responding to immediate needs and then the stabilization side, which is helping people go back to their communities. We've also had, as you, you're probably aware, a program to help the Yazidi. Um, mm -hmm. So there is a real interest. Um, Good. There. Canada has taken the helm of NATO's uh, uh, new training mission in Iraq. Uh, that's uh, Oh, the question is that what do Canada and NATO want to achieve, uh, especially considering the uh, movement of ISIS are increasing at the moment? Right. Um, so we're, we, we're providing the first commander for this NATO mission. And, and I can't speak on behalf of NATO. We are a, 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 a very active participant in the mission. We're providing lots of, of uh, Canadian troops to it. But uh, just to be clear, I can't, I can't speak on behalf of speak NATO. Speak on and, behalf of your and country. What, um, and what, uh, you know, we're, we're part of a group of people yeah. uh, thinking about that mission. 
More generally, um, I think that what we're all trying to achieve is a situation, the conditions in which it's easier to do, and it's, it's, we can do the work around stabilization, um, long-term development, addressing these kinds of issues around governance, around um, women's empowerment, uh, gender equality. In the training, I wonder if the Peshmerga will be included of the training. So we have always, uh, the Canadian Armed Forces operating here as part of the coalition, we have always operated under the umbrella of the Iraqi security forces. And so in the past, there's been some, some excellent cooperation, I think, within that coalition, um, with the Peshmerga and other uh, elements of the Iraqi security forces. And I think we're optimistic that that, that, that will continue. Could you tell me your plan regarding training Peshmerga in Kurdistan? As I said, we operate here under that broad umbrella of the Iraqi security forces. And so the, there, there's been some great cooperation in the past, and we're hopeful that that cooperation between the Peshmerga and other elements of the uh, Iraqi security forces will continue. Okay. When the Kurdistan region uh, held uh, its referendum last year for independence, uh, Justin Trudeau the, uh, declined a comment saying it was a, an internal matter and uh, like he was uh, comparing the, with the experience with the uh, Cubic in Canada. Now, and Curtis, of course, appreciated the statement very much. Now, have you been asked by either Baghdad and Erbil about uh, separatism or federal government in Iraq? So, at the same time that the Prime Minister made that statement, w we have always consistently said that we are firmly behind a united Iraq. And you can tell from the, the comments I've made mm -hmm. before, we also hope that's an Iraq that's, that's, uh, that's strong, that's safe, um, secure, that's diverse and, and inclusive. Um, and so there is a lot of interest in our own experience with federalism. Um, the, the, and, and that's really what the focus has been. It's, uh, you know, what, what, how has it worked for you folks? Um, you know, what, do you have any thoughts for us, any, any, any ideas, lessons learned that, that might be useful? That's really been the focus. And there is a lot of, a lot of interest in, in our experience with decentralization and with federalism. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, can I ask you if you give me some specific examples of that? Um, so we have, we have a great project um, with an organization called the Institute on Governance. Um, and it's doing different things in different parts of the country. Um, I recently visited, I was down in um, Karbala earlier this week. And there's a, a center of excellence there. And what they're doing is they're bringing together um, officials at the, at the provincial level, at the regional level, with officials at the federal level. So they get to sit down, they have, a, they have fun doing some training together for a day or two. They go off and then they try to work on the concrete issues of how do you decentralize education, how do you decentralize health services. So they do that for, for a few weeks. They come back again, they talk about those experiences, do a little bit more training, and then they, you know, they go off again and try to make it work even better. So it's that kind of, that kind of process of, of making it work in a really practical kind of way that that's, that's a, I think, a good example. But in the last uh, mm -hmm. few years, and since its establishment, the Iraqi government couldn't be strong enough, particularly the relations with the Kurdistan where you're going through bad uh, experience. Mm, so what's the definition of strong government now if Kurdish people still suffering from uh, lack of budget and Peshmerga uh, hasn't been supported by Iraqi government uh, recently? So I, you mentioned um, what uh, Prime Minister uh, Trudeau said earlier, yeah. and he made a really good point that, um, you know, that we each have internal dynamics in our countries that, that we're, in each case, we're better place to understand and to evaluate and to try to deal with. So we can share what our own experience has been, the things that have worked well, the lessons learned that we have, but ultimately those are kinds of issues that I think um, people here in Iraq need to, need, to, need to think through and resolve. Do you see the areas where the Canadian, Canadian government uh, can help the relationship between 
the federal government and the Kyology. Um, it, this, this, these projects where we're working on governance and exploring how do you make that relationship work you know, as well as, as it can, those are perhaps ways in which, which, we, in which we might help. Um, we, um, we don't have a perfect system. Um, we have certain experiences that, um, and certain things that have worked well in our particular context. And so we're happy to share what we've learned, um, you know, what we maybe do better, but we're happy to share those experiences, and, and that's really what we're trying but to do. Is there specific uh, like areas of or contact between Erbil and Baghdad that Canada could help or could work on? So th this is something really that's a, a, a dynamic within Iraq, my understanding, and you're probably better placed than I am to, to understand where that's going. Um, but there are certain areas where there is a decentralization process going forward. Um, and so those are areas where we've been asked to provide some, mm -hmm. some help and some thoughts. W we're happy to do that. And um, you're better placed to decide what part of our own experience might be useful to you um, and what you find um, of most value. You, 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 your government, and you see a bright future of relationship between Erbil and Baghdad? Um, we're always optimistic, right? Um, this is uh, a country that uh, we're committed to. Um, the reason that I'm here, I, I meant, talked a bit at the, at the start about this Middle East strategy. And so part of that Middle East strategy is greater diplomatic engagement. So one of the reasons I'm here is because um, we want to increase our engagement with, with Iraq. Um, so um, we're certainly looking forward to working, working with you. Okay. Many kids are eager to engage to Canada, either by getting visa or work or migrants, whatever. And you have good reputation internationally to help refugees, to accept refugees. Do you have plan to have an office uh, for visa section in Kurdistan? Um, so a as a general policy, and, and you're absolutely right, um, we have, uh, our, our country really has been built on the contributions of people from all over the world. Not to mention, of course, and not to forget, of course, um, the indigenous peoples who were there before the rest of us arrived. Um, and so it's, it's an experiment in how to bring all of those peoples together and to make that work. Um, and so we're, we're very welcoming. Um, we're delighted to have people come from all countries of the world. Let's specifically talk about Kurdistan. Yes. So we do have a program, Come to Canada. It's available to everybody. Um, so I encourage people to go to the website. Um, the, the website sort of describes what are some of the different options. And certainly it's something that people can take a look at and see if they qualify for. It, it's actually quite helpful. It has uh, different sort of bits and pieces of it that help you sort of think that you through. You mentioned it's very attracting people. Come to Canada. So go to Canada for what? On basis of work, refugee, asylum seekers? There's a number of different criteria mm -hmm. in terms of people who are, who are immigrating um, to Canada, who want to go there um, as, as an immigrant. Um, there are, there's a, a different process for people who are going as refugees. Um, we usually work through agencies who are identifying people outside of their countries of origin who are in need of, 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 of help. And what's your office uh, particularly does uh, do in, in, in Erbil? Well, I'm glad you mentioned our office here in Erbil because we have a really dynamic, uh, wonderful head of office, Nancy uh, Belcheron, that um, is here actually in, with us in the studio. Um, we're just delighted to have her as head of our office here. And so um, she and the office here in Erbil are working on a number of different things, whether it's um, the, uh, the trade side of the relationship, development cooperation, um, the, the uh, engaging with, um, with government, with uh, civil society, the range of different activities. Why it's an office, not a consulate in Erbil? It's a, it's a technical thing in our system. It depends on what series of services we're, we provide. So um, we provide um, some services out of other missions in the region. And it's just a question of what's the range of services that we can provide. And are you hoping to expand this uh, office in Erbil to consulate? 
We've actually seen through both in, in Baghdad and in Erbil really, really rapid growth in the last uh, two years. So we've gone from uh, one Canadian, I think, and, and two or three locally engaged staff. We now have um, six Canadians in Baghdad. We have two Canadians in Erbil. We have another six uh, locally engaged staff here in Erbil, and we have another eight in, in Baghdad. So the growth has been quite significant. So we're, we're always looking for opportunities. We're always open to other possibilities. We'll have to see. Okay. On a personal note, I know you've been here for a short time, but what's your impression of, uh, on, uh, of Iraq and Kurdistan? Uh, I've, I, in the, my two visits here, I've had a, a really, really good time. Um, the last time I was here, I was able to take that drive from Erbil to Sulaymaniyya, and uh, you have a beautiful, beautiful country. Um, so it's, it's, I'm, I'm really looking forward to being here on a regular basis. Um, I'm planning a trip uh, in the region up to the hook in the next few weeks. I, I hope to be here and I plan to be here on a very regular basis. And as I said, you have a great resource here with our head of office. Mr. Gebert, I hope to see you again. It was a uh, great pleasure to talk to you. This is the end of the interview. Likewise, thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you indeed. Thank you. <laughs>